What's the crack, lads? And welcome back to the channel. We have got the European Club Championship nominating contract player review ready to go. There's some very interesting choices in here, lads, right? There's some very good players here for free. So if you don't know, you can unlock a free five-star nominating contract uh, in the match pass. I've done a video on it already, but just to show you guys, it takes about 15 matches right here in the match pass. So you literally just have to play 15 matches, right? So if you are a newcomer to the game, you don't know this, make sure and check that match pass out when you do get the reward. It's an instant reward and you can, you know, get any of these players, right? So there is also the Japanese match pass as well, but I definitely think this one is way better than the Japanese player of the month to use your nominating contracts. All right, so let's get into it, right? So straight off the rip, you're going to have, what, six players, one, two, three, four, five, six players that are five star nominating contracts, and you're going to have the rest as four stars. So they are kind of I suppose expensive in terms of contracts, nominating contracts, but if you have got a couple of them lying around, I think now is the time, depending on your, your team and your squad, obviously, now is the time to get a couple of these because there are some fairly good players in this. I would say that these two boys, Shuamene and Fernandez, are going to be a serious tandem in midfield. We are going to be getting one of these on the live stream and we're going to be testing them out for you guys and doing player reviews and stuff as we usually do. We've also got Sergio Ramos as well. Um, there's some nice players in here, man. Rafa Silva, one of the most underrated players in the game, in my opinion. So we're going to focus on these five guys here, right? Rafa, Ramos, Fernandez, Shuamene, and Ederson, right? And Dabele. We're also going to focus on him. The rest of the players, I would say, I've kind of covered before. Now, this guy does kind of excite me a little bit because he's got so many player levels to go. Um, you know, he genuinely is, is one of the better players to look at here. We are going to go over to eFootballDB in a minute and train these guys up. This guy is also a super sub. He's got first time shot. He's got double touch, scissors faint, dipping shot, long range shooting, excellent abilities, 81 acceleration, 70 finishing, 79 speed for his base stats. He's also just that perfect height as well that he's 17, but as that goal poacher playing style, he's going to be rocket fast. Kind of reminds me of Makuku, who was there on the match pass before for Borussia Dortmund. I think that he's a similar play style. Obviously not going to be as quick um, based on the offensive awareness, but the acceleration and balance are going to be really high when we do train him up. So we are going to take a look at him as well when we go over to eFootballDB.com. But... For now, these four players here, or these three players here, and including Perisic and that, the four of these, right? Vanekin was a beast in PES 2020, I think it was. He was a monster in that. He has a wavering form, but he's on D rating, so I'd hold off on buying him yet. He looks like just an average enough attack in midfield. He's very slow. He's not going to be as good as some other players in this. I'd hold off on him. Correa as well. If you don't have Messi, if you don't have Dybala, if you play SSs, if you play three up front and you don't have one of those players that are able to be a brilliant dribbler and able to kind of have that acceleration, if you don't play an AMF in that role, like Javi Simmons or somebody like that, he could be a good option as well. He does have standard form, excellent player skills. He doesn't have one touch pass, but he also has super sub. So that is something to keep in mind as well. He's more of a dribbler than a passer. So keep that in mind when you're training him up. We will get to that again. Dest, a very good right back, kind of an average enough right back, pinpoint crossing, one touch pass, he also has early crosser and speeding bullet, I like him as a four star lads, if you're looking for a four star right back and you don't have a lot of GP, I definitely think he could be worth a punt at right back, he's got lovely offensive awareness and defensive awareness, speed and acceleration is very very high, you're going to be going into the 90s in both of those, you're going to be the same with balance and stamina in the high 80s and then the passing dribbling or the defending you can decide to focus on them as you see fit and Perisic right so Perisic is a guy as well that he has super sub a lot of these players look absolute monstrous pinpoint crossing excellent player skills he's got standard form which is a bit of a pity but he does have every other play style that you could possibly want apart from he doesn't have pinpoint cross or early crosser which is weird because he's a cross specialist and he has pinpoint crossing a little bit of a strange one I think that would have pushed him up into the meta as a guy to swing balls in, right? So we are going to go over to eFootballDB and look at these guys in a lot more detail, starting with Tell, right? So Tell is a guy, obviously we've already covered him here. He goes to 41 levels. And again, it depends on how you want to train him up, right? I'll try and keep this video short-ish because I will be doing a live stream where I'll be doing this in a lot more detail. And I'm also going to be doing training guides and player reviews for five of the players on this, including probably this guy for a four set, right? 
So straight off the rip, we're going to be looking at this guy to get his shooting up to at least 80. We're not going to be making him into Mbappe. We know we're not going to get the finishing of Romario or somebody like that. Um, he's just going to be a very kind of average finisher that when he gets a chance in front of goal, he'll be able to pull it away, right? We also want him to be coming on as a super sub. We're not going to be starting him. So we do want that pace. We do want that acceleration. We do want that blister and pace there when we bring him on. We also want a little bit of stamina. We don't need a massive amount of stamina because we're going to be bringing him on in the second half. So you could potentially get away with 85 speed there and 73 stamina. We still want that little bit of speed just to have the boost when we bring him on, right? Now, the thing I like about this guy is his dribbling, man. You can get to dribbling up nearly into the well you can get it up to 90 nearly 90 there if you really want to right he's obviously not that bad um on the ball with the tight possession and the ball control at 80 uh we don't really need pass obviously we're going to be using him as a super sub so from this position we can decide then whether we want to train him up a little bit more speed which i think i'll probably do um to, you know speed obviously is going to be the main factor with this guy here and then we can just pop one into passing to bring that up to 65 low pass i think that's a fairly good super sub lads if i do say so myself we have also got rafa silva one of the best in my opinion most underrated players in the game i am 100 going to get this guy i don't know actually i think i already have the version of him that was released um a good while ago and i definitely have i think i got his version which was the uh, enchanting dribbler right so the enchanting dribbler actually uh this card looks slightly better because of a couple of key stats to it now he doesn't have one touch pass which is a slight concern but i'm going to be using him for just pure blister and pace as we see here so rafa is going to be a guy that you're going to be bringing on maybe off the bench or maybe starting him he is on c form but he does have unwavering form so if we are going to be training rafa up I would definitely be trying to get up his dribbling fairly high, which goes fairly high. Get that up to 8 there. We're also going to get his dexterity up to 80 offensive awareness and 87 balance, which brings up the acceleration to 92. We're also going to get the speed. We don't need the speed too much, but Rafa does actually do a lot of track back and you can play him as a right mid. I think that's probably his best position um, because he is a prolific winger. You can play him on either, either flank, but I do like these stats with him. And then also it's about picking what else you want. So I would probably boost up the low pass a little bit on this guy just to have him a little bit different that he's not just a pace guy. Um, I'll stay away from the finishing because the way that they've nerfed finishing, it's not going to be, you know, productive for me to do that. And then you can either decide when you're at this stage, you can either decide to max out his dribbling, which I'll probably do. Um, you could even take one more off this and put one into dexterity to bring him to a 91 overall with 93 acceleration, 88 balance, 90 ball control and 90 dribbling. Monstrous lads with those player skills. Extremely, extremely good. And I can't recommend the player highly enough than Rafa Silva. He is one of the most underrated gems in the game by a mile. And I, I guarantee you a lot of people will see that after this pack comes out. We've also got Dombele. Obviously, Dombele has been in uh, good form for Napoli. And he obviously plays for a box-to-box -box midfielder. Again, we've got a very good player here that, while he doesn't have unwavering form, he does have a lot of really nice player skills as a box-to-box, -box, including one-touch pass and fighting spirit. He doesn't have interception or blocker, which is a slight concern, but not a massive concern for how we're going to be training him up because all we're going to be doing on this is using him as kind of like our Goretzka style player, our action man. That's kind of what we're going to be using him as. We don't need to go too high on anything else. We will go over here to eFootballDB and I'll train him up as I'm doing the video, right? So you can see here straight off the rip, we actually don't need to touch for the player that he is here as a box to box. We don't need to touch, if we don't want to, his ball control, uh, his passing or his dribbling. Like, we don't really need to touch that. So I would boost up his dexterity, his lower body. And then, you know, you pump in this into his defending. You've got 80 aggression. And then, obviously, we can pump in the rest into passing to bring that up. But that's a very dominant box-to-box -box for a free five-star, lads. Extremely dominant. We don't even need to go that high with the dexterity if we don't want to. We could keep it at that. And we could also put the passing up one more to 85. I know a lot of people complain about me uh, sometimes when I don't upgrade the passing. But it depends on the role that the player is using. There's no point me having a box-to-box -box player with 90 passing if I'm not going to be using him as my pass guy. You know what I mean? I'll just have a dedicated guy in for my play style and for whatever style I'm using. Speaking of center midfielders that are box-to-box, -box, this is kind of the counterpart are the counterpoint to Dombele, right? So for Fernandez here, we're going to have a player that's on B form, right? 
So Fernandez is going to be all about kind of action. He's going to be all about getting the ball forward, getting the ball into really good areas of the pitch. He's got unwavering form. He's got one touch pass, way to pass, low lofted pass. This is what I'm talking about when you're using players in a specific way, right? What do we need to train up with Fernandez here to make him extremely overpowered, right? His speed and his acceleration and stamina don't need much. So we're just going to sort them out first. We're going to actually bring that up to 80 because we want to use him a lot around the pitch. We're actually going to bring it up to 86, right? Dexterity, we don't want him to be too attacking, but we still want to have that acceleration there at maybe 78. Maybe 78 is a bit too high. Maybe 76 will do us just to be able to react to the ball a little bit quicker. Then, depending on if we're playing him as a more defensive-minded player, like with quick counter, or we're going to be playing him with a little bit of passing from possession, we can decide to boost that up a little bit there. Not a massive amount, we're not going to get it into the 90s, but the dribbling is where I want to go with it, and I want to get the tight possession up as best as I possibly can before I pump everything in to um, defending. So once we get that, we have 12 points left on defending we don't need to worry too much about physical contact or jump because he is a smaller base player than the likes of Vieira or someone so we're going to max out his defending there to get 85 aggression I think that's a monster lads I genuinely think that that is a monster of a player and um, we can even put one more into dexterity if we want to there I think that is a monster of a player lads you're going to have 85 aggression 78 defensive engagement 77 acceleration 86 stamina and then tight possession low pass in the 88s huge that is a monstrous player for free and one of definitely one of the best guys that they have released for free kind of reminds me of Declan Rice we've also got Sergio Ramos Ramos is a guy that as you kind of go through these lists you're going to see that he's got very very bad pace right but we're going to overextend ourselves to get that up uh, to 99 and 99 in the tackling and the aggression 94 of defensive awareness he has, by his base stats, tight possession, low pass, and loft of pass are all fairly decent. We don't need to touch his passing. We can boost up his dribbling a little bit. But genuinely, lads, we're not going to get the acceleration and the speed up that high, right? We're not going to be using Ramos as our main defender. I think we're going to be using Ramos either for the first half of the game or else bringing him on as a sub if his form is up. And he's probably one of the best players off the bench you could possibly have, right? So we're not going to touch his dexterity or lower body. I will do a full review on him. We're going to boost up the rest of this to get that header and jump up as high as we possibly can. So that is how I would train him up there. Max out the aerial strength and defending. Six into aerial strength, 16 into defending. Absolute unit at the back. Kind of like Thiago Silva in the way that he defends. Similar body shape, body style, speed, everything like that is obviously going to be a bit higher on Thiago. But the defensive stats is where it's at with him. And then we've got our goalkeeper Ederson. So when we're training up Ederson, lads, because uh, goalkeeper reflexes are still the key one, we need to get that up to 90 before we even discuss this card. And I think that the fact that you can't really get um, anything else past that 90, I do think that this card is probably a bit of a disappointing one compared to like Donnarumma or even Oblak or somebody that you can buy for free. Even the Brazilian pack um, shapes up quite better. Obviously, this Brazilian pack had minus four compared to this one. So this one is actually probably one of the better versions of him. But I still think that this version of him is quite decent as well that they released. And his standard card that goes 19 levels is quite decent. But yeah, he is a very, very good player. Um, One of the better goalkeepers in it. He is on C form this week and he only has standard form. So that kind of takes him down a little peg or two, um, which is a little bit of a pity. And then last but not least, we have the main man, Shuamene. Didn't start for Real Madrid yesterday against uh, Liverpool. But uh, he is a monster, man. He is one of the best box-to-box -box players in the game. He has interception and sliding tackle as well as one-touch pass. So he's got that perfect hybrid. He's not an anchorman, so he doesn't really need blocker for how you're going to be playing him. And I think if unless you're playing Goretzka, Vieira, or somebody in a different role, I think he's one of the best players that you could possibly get, right? He's just so good on the ball at breaking up the play, and we're going to show you why, right? So when we're training him up, we actually have a lot of points here. 28 player levels to go. And we also have a lot of opportunity to be able to do, do, get the defense up really strong, right? Don't worry too much about his acceleration and speed. Obviously, we're just going to increase that a fraction, right? So we're going to get that up to 8. We're going to get the lower body strength up to 8. No, we actually won't even go that much. 85 stamina should be more than enough for this guy. Maybe 86 uh, should be more than enough. And the acceleration, we're actually going to keep at 70 because we want to keep that offensive awareness down, okay? That's how we, I would probably train him. Dribbling, tight possession is very, very good. 
So we're going to put four into that. This is just how I would train him up, lads. You want him to be kind of like Vieira. That's how you want to train him. Passing, we have the passing in very, very good here. We're just going to put one into that. And then the rest, right? We're going to put four into this. And then we're going to put 13 into this. And that'll give us, sorry, we're going to put one more into this here. And that'll give us a very dominant defensive-minded box-to-box -box player. 90 tackling, 90 aggression, 86 defensive awareness, and 84 defensive engagement, right? If you do not want, if you want to pause the video there and copy this training guide, you can do that on the bottom left here. But if you want a non-defensive player, say you have an anchorman and you want just kind of like a really dominant player to bring the ball forward, right? This guy trains up exceptionally well, right? His defensive stats, we're just going to put them up to four to get the aggression and tackling there to still have that tenacity in midfield. But the rest of the stats that we're going to train up is pretty much going to be just kind of how you would train up any player in this position. We're going to get that stamina up and that speed up a little bit. We're also going to improve the passing to 90 low pass. We're also going to improve the dribbling to get the dribbling up to 80. And then we're going to improve the dexterity as well. And then we're also going to finish that off with a couple into aerial strength. That is a very well-rounded center midfielder kind of box to box. So the first option was a DMF. If you are playing him as a DMF defensive minded player um, and with no real cover behind him. And then the second one is if you are using him as just an all all around monster link into play. So that is it for me, lads. I will be back quite soon. It's a long video, but there's a lot to get through here. We will be doing reviews of five or six of the players here and buying them and testing them and doing player guides in more detail. But until next time, I will talk to you in a bit. Don't forget to subscribe. Peace.